Hello guys and welcome back or if you are new to my channel, hi, my name is Sorin and today I'm going to show you how to build your own variable bench power supply. In the previous episode I've showed you how to modify a transformer and get any voltage you want from it. I will use this transformer made by me with two outputs, one with a peak voltage of 32 volts DC and around 3.5 amps, and the second output of 11 volts DC for the voltmeter and ammeter display. These L-shaped metal brackets with screws are necessary to fix the transformer on the power supply case and will help to hold the silicon iron sheets together very tight to minimize the 50 Hz humming noise specific to transformers. So this is the muscle of our operation. The brain will be represented by this 300 W step-down converter. We need to modify it a bit, but it's very good for this project. We also need a few additional components. They are not very expensive and you can also salvage some of them. You need to be very careful when choosing a digital voltmeter and ammeter. I'm gonna use this model with maximum 100 volts and 10 amps. But more important it's the precision. Here you can see two similar digital voltmeters, but there is a big difference between them. The left one is more accurate and below 10 volts it can measure the value using two decimal places instead of one. For my fixed voltage power supply that's not mandatory, but for a variable voltage power supply it's recommended to read the voltage with two decimal places. Usually the voltmeters with two thick wires have one decimal place and the voltmeters with three thick wires have two decimal places, but you should always read the specification and reviews. We need a case made from an unconductive material. I like this one because it's made of plastic and it has thick panels. Next I need to measure the components dimensions so I will know how to arrange them on the front panel. And please don't comment that I've copied other YouTubers. Some of you may have noticed from my other videos that I like symmetric arrangements. This is very symmetric and I think it's the best way to arrange the front panel for a variable power supply. I will use my Dremel to cut these holes, so safety goggles are mandatory. My tiny Dremel struggles to cut this thick plastic panel. I will use a cutter to smooth out the edges. The round holes are easy to make, just use a power drill. Then you need a chamfering bit to smooth them out. I like these silver potentiometer knobs, but I think they look better against a black background, so I'll cover the front panel with a black vinyl sheet. Before I do this I need to clean the panel. Normally the vinyl should be applied from one side to the other, but this plastic panel is very small, so it's not such a big deal. If there are a few air bubbles under the vinyl, just push them to the side of the panel. You can temporarily remove the vinyl to eliminate them. To be sure the vinyl will not exfoliate in time, I will stick the vinyl edges on the back, but this plastic panel doesn't have a perfect rectangular shape. I need to cut it in such a way that will allow me to bend it to the back without making the panel difficult to install. I'll use the cutter to prepare the holes. I've seen a lot of comments that in some cases it's cheaper just to buy the finished product instead of buying all the components and build it yourself. That is true, but if you're truly a DIY enthusiast, you can salvage many components. For example, if you have a broken PC power supply, you can salvage a 6 amps bridge rectifier, a lot of wires, capacitors, inductors, a big diode, tiny transformers, heatsink, a computer fan, AC connectors and switches, maybe even other components. So I will salvage the C14 connector and some other components from this old and broken PC power supply. On the back panel I will install the mains connector, a rocker switch and fuse holders. Here you can see again how thick and strong this plastic panel is. The transformer works with alternative current. To be useful for my project, I need to convert it into direct current, so I will make a circuit board with two bridge rectifiers. The first one is for the 32 volts DC output. I will solder a bridge rectifier of 8 amps. 
To filter the output voltage, I need the big electrolytic capacitor connected in parallel. I think this one is good enough. And an 82 kilo ohms resistor to slowly discharge the capacitor after the power supply is turned off. For the second output of 11 volts, I will use lower value components. When you position the components inside the case, remember to leave enough room for each component, some of them may get hot. And you also need to figure out where all the wires are coming, so you won't tangle them. On the base panel the components will be mounted with screws, so I will mark and drill all the tiny holes. For the step down converter the trimmer potentiometers will be replaced with panel mount potentiometers of the same value, 10 kilo ohms. I will use good quality flexible breadboard wires to extend the LED and potentiometers. To protect the wires and soldering joints until this project is finished, I will cover them with hot glue. The step down converter LED will also be mounted on the front panel. I will insulate all soldering joints with shrinking tubes. For the rest of the power supply internal connections, I will use 1.5mm gauge wires from an extension cable. In my country, which is famous for beautiful women and the lack of highways, the earth wire is colored in green and yellow. One of the mains wires will go through the switch and fuse before going to the transformer. Normally you should connect the fuse on the live wire, but with this type of socket you can see that the live and neutral wires can be reversed easily. I presume there is no need to tell you that it's dangerous to work with transformers and mains connections. Always open the circuit breaker or disconnect the wires from the mains. And of course use shrinking tubes to insulate all the soldering joints. Now it's time for my favorite part, to fit all the components in a small enclosure. The earth wire must be connected to all metallic parts. In my case the transformer is the only metallic component. Everything else is insulated. The silicon iron sheets are not fully insulated anymore, so the metal bracket is making contact with the transformer iron core. Next I need to connect all the wires. I've soldered the voltmeter and binding posts connectors in this configuration. For detailed information about the wiring, you can check this schematic, which you can also find in the video description. The binding posts will be fixed to the panel with one nut. I will use a small screwdriver to tighten it. A second nut will be used on each binding post to tighten the connectors. Everything fits together nicely. The tip of the red binding post connector is too close to the step down converter. This shouldn't be a problem, but I will cut them anyway. My grandfather's rusty pincers are perfect for this job. I will use a 10 amps fuse for the mains and a 6 amps fuse on the positive output of the step down converter. The potentiometer nubs have some tiny screws to lock them in position. Before closing the box let's make a quick test. The minimum value should be to the left and the maximum to the right. If yours is connected incorrectly just reverse the wires on the outer pins of the potentiometer. And finally the power supply is finished. This is the last screw. Yes, now it's time to test it. Thoroughly. Let's start with something small. Two light bulbs of 4.5 volts and 500 milliamps connected in parallel. I increase the voltage slowly. At 4.5 volts they are using almost 1 amp. Now let's limit the current at different values. Next a 10 watts LED. We need a heatsink now, it will get very hot. And we also need some protection against the light, otherwise the camera will be blinded. My sunglasses are the best feature in this scene. Actually not, they cost only 2 dollars. At 10 volts it's pretty bright. Let's move on to something big now, a 55 watts H7 light bulb, which is pretty common, you can find it on many cars. I need to cover it because it will be very bright and we won't see a thing. 
When the voltage is set between 13 and 14 volts, which is the voltage of the electrical system in most cars, the power consumption reaches the 55 watts value. But what's the maximum power output of this power supply? Well, the maximum voltage is 31.5 volts. But when you connect even a small load, the maximum voltage is dropping. This happens because I'm using a transformer to power my project, not a regulated power supply. As I explained in the previous episode, the transformer output voltage decreases when you connect a load to it. So, as the load increases, the voltage is decreasing. Unlike regulated power supplies, which can keep the voltage stable. So I started to measure the maximum voltage and current with different loads. After a few measurements with different resistors as loads, I came up with this graph. The output power varies across the range, but you can see the peak value is 93 watts at 13.4 volts with almost 7 amps. And while the voltage gets lower, the maximum current goes even higher. I've checked the components and they just warm up a little, nothing dangerous. The casing has vent holes and the step-down converter it's working at less than 31% of its maximum power, so there should be no problem. In my opinion, this is a nice looking and very powerful variable power supply. It can deliver more than 7 amps in the most commonly used voltage range, which is between 1 and 13 volts. And I have recently started my Patreon campaign, you can take a look if you have a few seconds. So this is how I build my variable bench power supply. Please let me know what you think about it and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Oh, and you can also check out my other videos. Bye!